There's a lot of talk out there about how the church in America is dying. Is it dying? Well, no, I don't think that the church in America is dying. I think that the American church is dying. And I keep using that term and you're asking me in the comments, what are you talking about when you say American church? It's just the church, Matt. What I mean by that is a specific Western industrialized corporate way of doing church from a business mindset that is attractional, that is not organic, but is program driven that you build the best programs and you staff it with volunteers. There's no discipleship much going on. Low transformation, low depth. Willow Creek was the first one to point it out. They've gone down the tubes. They're really having a hard time. They were the model church for the mega church model for many, many years. The reveal study showed that, hey, this didn't work. We didn't make disciples. Our volunteers are burned out. The more you work in the programs, the less you're growing. Like all these problems have been pointed out. And so we have to start looking at other expressions of what church can look like and in doing so, the church is actually growing. And then in the middle of all that, COVID came in and just catalyzed an exponential acceleration of the rate of change because we were forced into flexibility. And when you get forced into flexibility where the location of your worship no longer is what it was because we had to come in week in and week out to the same address to do the big church institutional church model, COVID said, no, stay home, do church at home. And then all of a sudden we have this like flexibility and this nimbleness and this opportunity to make decisions from a new perspective that then led a lot of people down a different route for church as they had to come back to the traditional model and said, we see now that we've had some time to think about it. We've been away, we've been in homes, and we're seeing that there are weaknesses in this and we really don't want to come back to the way things were. I think the church in America is as alive as it ever has been, even as some of the cultural trends are turning against Christianity, the church itself is quite strong in America. When you empty out the church, you actually push the church to the margins. This is Acts 8, 1 through 8 all over again. It was persecution when Stephen died persecution rose up and it scattered the church out of Jerusalem, which is exactly what needed to happen to the church was to get out of Jerusalem, to get out of the hub, to get out of like being like the Jerusalem church with all these thousands of people. And it's like, you remember Pentecost when this happened, the Holy Spirit came and you remember when you heard it in your language and they heard it in their language. It's like that amazing moment, like your soul just latches onto those kind of moments and wants to hold onto those locations. And so they continue to meet in the temple courts for some time until the situation forced them out of their comfort zone. And when the church gets forced out of its comfort zone, the church actually thrives. The church doesn't die. And this is what we're seeing in Amer American Christianity, like the American church is just becoming more like church, not just the American church. So now the church is back in school cafeterias. Now the church is back in rented spaces, storefronts. The church has gone back to where the people are. And this is always a phenomenally great move for the church, for movements to begin happening. Because when you become um, detached or unmoored, unanchored from location being such a central part of your identity with a name on a sign that's been there since 1956, when you unmoor yourself from that brick and mortar, you become flexible, you become nimble. You begin making kingdom decisions rather than facility decisions. You're not trying to raise money for that parking lot anymore. You're just trying to do the work, just trying to do the mission, just trying to serve the congregation again and get those relationships going. When you stir things up like that, the most important things rise to the top and the least important things that, that at one time seemed so central to the way things were begin fading out into the margins and the church ends up in the margins, in the storefronts, in the schools, in these new spaces where they're sharing spaces. They're having to bring all the church equipment in to facilitate church and that Movement creates service, which creates connection and relationship, which can lead to discipleship, which can you know, like lead to new people being exposed to this because you've taken church out into these new spaces and not where the church has been located for like 80 years. So this is a tremendous opportunity. The church is not dying. The church is thriving. The old church model seems to be dying on some level on life support. I think there will always be attractional churches. I think there will always be mega churches. I think there will always be programmatic churches. I have no condemnation for it, except where it deserves condemnation in specific individual church instances, not as a whole mass condemnation, because God uses those churches. And I have no reason to sit here and point fingers at those churches on ma in mass, um, because 
I don't want to be condemning things that God is using, but I do see a shift happening, and I think it's incredibly healthy. And we're looking at it going, oh no, that church was 500, and now they're 20, and now they've got to sell their building, and oh, it's such a loss. A lot of these churches are seeing this as tremendous opportunity. So many churches are leaving their comfortability, they're leaving their expectation of permanence, and they're moving into temporary situations that then, again, make them reevaluate things and get their priorities straight. God's taken our attention off the parking lot and off the brick and mortar and off the color of the carpet, and he's moved us back into community, to relationship, to mission, to discipleship. It's a grand opportunity, guys. And I don't think this would have happened without COVID. It would have been a very, very long, slow, painful death, but God kind of ripped the mandate off. When you uproot traditional structures like brick and mortar, you really put to rest some very unhealthy things, like the idolatry of the building. Here's the deal. The church is moving into desert spaces. The church had this well-established presence, and now it's moved into the margins. The church is having a wilderness experience. Pastors, preachers are going to have a wilderness experience, transitioning from the stability and security of what we had into something new, moving into bivocational, moving into secular employment, volunteering your time for ministry. Like These are all desert space, identity-forming, pivotal moments. Like If you look at the nation of Israel, what formed their identity was freedom from slavery, getting free from those power structures of the past and moving through the wilderness, a time of character formation, a time of learning to trust God, a time where if God doesn't come through, we have nothing to eat, nothing to drink. We're not going to have what we need. Like this is the season that the church is moving into, but we had to free ourselves from some of those things of the past. God had to liberate us from some of those structures in order for us to enter into the season of reconnection with him, following his lead, depending on him fully. Like when you live in the wilderness, in the desert, you have to depend on God all the way. And we had structures, we had the Egyptian structures, the powers and the way that things were, where we didn't have to rely on God in the same sort of way. We had our own systems, we had our own backup funds, we had all that stuff set up. And so now we've broken free of those things. We've gone through the water, we're into the wilderness, we're reconnecting with God like on Sinai. And it's gonna be maybe a hard 40 years, hopefully it's not. 40 years, but this is pivotal identity formation time. And it comes with the loss of what we had, even though some of it wasn't good. They still complained, sometimes wanted to be back in Egypt when things were a certain way and they expected certain things, but it's not that way anymore. Those things are being stripped away. And so what are we going to do when the structures that we're so comfortable with get stripped away? We end up having to trust God fully. We connect with him on a deeper level, and that prepares us to enter into the promised land, the next phase of the adventure. We got to go across the water again. They go across the Jordan. God dries it up like he did the Red Sea. And then we're able to enter into a new phase of the church in the West where things are deeply dependent on God. We have surrendered our independence. We have surrendered our manifest destiny of the American culture. We have relinquished our emphasis on liberty, personal liberty at the expense of unity. It's just going to make the church such a better place. If you ever want a good read on the power of location and grieving the loss of what's familiar. There's this book, The Solace of Fierce Landscapes. It's such a powerful book about the death of the author's mother and going through the grieving process. It, it just it brought me to tears on several occasions. Um, but there's a little parable in there. I think it's maybe like a Native American story. The rain has come down in the desert. And when rain comes down in the desert, it washes things out. And it can be very dangerous if you set up camp in the in the desert and then the rain comes it can just wash you out and kill you so this river is flowing through the desert and the river is personified begins to realize that um, it's going to dry up it's going to evaporate it's not going to be a river anymore and the river is really sad about that and so the clouds are beckoning saying come up here with us there's a solution whenever you're, you're not you're not going to die you're just going to be changed and when you're changed, you evaporate. It's not the end of being a river. You're going to come up here and gather with us up here in the clouds. And then when the time is right and everything gets set right, it's going to rain again. And you're going to go back down and you're going to become a river again. And that's some of the process that we go through when we see things changing and we say, I thought that was the way church was always supposed to be. But things are changing and I don't know if I'm comfortable with it. And, and, and I'm so latched onto that location and that paradigm and that way of doing church. I don't know if I want to be a cloud. The clouds are beckoning, saying, come up here with us. We've been doing this a while. You'll see what will happen. Just trust us.
And I think God is saying, just trust me. I've taken people through the wilderness before. This is not the end, it's just the beginning of another chapter, something greater, something deeper, something richer. And we're gonna look back on the old way, some of us who experienced that most of our lives, and we'll have some nostalgia, we'll have to grieve some losses, but we're also going to be able to get to a better place that is richer, deeper, more relational, more dependent on God, more filled with testimony, powerful prayer, fasting and surrender. And we're gonna need leaders who are willing to be brave, who are willing to be uncomfortable, who are willing to take on new work. And we're gonna need the older people to bless this, if at all possible. That older generation, the 60s, 70s, and 80s, they see these changes coming, just so want to grasp onto those things because you knew it for 95% of your life. This is what church was. And it's going to be really hard to let go of that. But I encourage you to bless the younger people in making these changes. Bless the younger people in selling that building. Bless these younger people in investing that money in mission and in new efforts. We're going to talk more about that soon, but this is how life always works. Life and death, death and life, going through the seasons, going through the cycles, rebirth is coming, and I think actually it's already here. The church is becoming healthier than it's ever been. We have much to rejoice. We have much to hope for. Let's be brave. If I can help you in any way, please reach out. I'm going to put my email on the screen. I'm building out some ways to help you if you want to start something new that will be available this summer, look forward to telling you more about that. And if nothing else, I'm going to put up another video about House Church. And I hope you'll just check it out because there's great changes taking place. If you haven't hit like, hit like, subscribe, and we'll see you again soon. Take care.